when we sit, we sit facing the wall and we keep our eyes open. So the wall is there, but the wall is not the object of this person sitting, even though our eyes can see the wall, but we don't think wall is the object or the sound of the wind or about singing outside, those are just there and they are coming in. But uh, those are not object of our ears, just happening. Uh, and our thinking is the same thing, same as, you know, words thinking. Uh, if we make uh, those thinking as a kind of object and s start to think, I like this or I hate that, then we start to think. But when we let go, that means thought are just thought coming and going. I think according to the Dogen, this is a middle way. That means clinging to our five skandhas. And, and another extreme is negate all of the five skandhas. But we, in our just sitting, we are free from both extremes. I think that is the meaning of just sitting or dropping of body and mind uh, in Dogen's teaching. So this is really a practice of middle path. And that came from Shakyamuni Buddha. Middle way has two meanings. One is a practical and another is a philosophical meaning. Mm -hmm. What he said in the uh, first teaching at the Diya Park to those five monks is the middle way between self-indulgence and self-modification. You know, the first one is the way he lived at his father's palace until he left. He had a luxurious life. His father uh, provided everything uh, the boy could enjoy but somehow he found that was not a meaningful life and he, uh, full of suffering in that way of life. So he left uh, his uh, Paris and started to practice. First he practiced uh, meditation with some teachers, two teachers, and he reached the uh, highest level that those teachers could teach, but somehow he was not satisfied. So after that, he practiced a uh, ascetic practice, very strict ascetic practice. Sometimes he ate only one or two grain uh, a day or so. Or he stopped uh, breathing and he, he said he was almost, almost dead. And he practiced that kind of practice for six years. And he thought that is not uh, the path to the awakening or liberation. So he quit the ascetic practice and he received some food offering and so he restored some strength and he bathed in the river or pond. His body became uh, clean and he had some energy and he started to sit under the body tree. So uh, when he said, he, I found the middle way to those five monks, he meant the middle way between these two sides of life. He experienced, he actually experienced the life of, you know, to satisfy our desires. And another extreme is a practice to negate all necessity of our uh, physical body and also mental desires. But he thought those two are not meaningful. That was the first meaning of the word middle way or middle path. When we talk about our body, you know, the philosophical meaning of middle path is not important but it means the middle path between there are something fixed and there is nothing fixed. Those are two extremes. So middle way means, uh, philosophically means, uh, middle way between everything is, is existing as something fixed beings 
and another is nothing that exists. So that is the second meaning of the middle way. But in the, in the practical sense, middle way means to live with this body and mind. We need uh, something to avoid, which uh, makes our life unhealthy. That is too much desire and activity to, to satisfy our desire. That create our life suffering. It becomes he- unhealthy. But to negate all of those desires or necessity of our body and our mind, then it's not healthy again. We negate the life. In a concrete meaning, sense, middle way, what Buddha taught is the Eightfold Noble Path. That is a healthy way of life. That is right way, correct way of thinking and speech and uh, livelihood and effort uh, and meditation and so forth, and wisdom. Those are to nurture those eight areas of our life is the middle way as the most healthy way of life to avoid two extremes. That is what uh, middle way means, the way we live with our human body and also mind. There is only the wall. I neither negate nor affirm anything. I drop off body and mind. I live on the ground of reality. I stop worrying. I settle more deeply into immeasurable reality. I keep this same posture through all mental conditions without being pulled this way or that. There is no good or bad Zen. Zen is always Zen. I maintain Zen posture through all conditions. There is only the wall. I neither negate nor affirm anything. I drop off body and mind. I live on the ground of reality. I stop worrying. I settle more deeply into immeasurable reality. I keep this same posture through all mental conditions without being pulled this way or that. There is no good or bad Zen. Zen is always Zen. I maintain Zen posture through all conditions. <laughs> 